Hello and welcome to BAC Kids Online. I'm so glad that you're here today. I hope you are ready for another amazing true story from the Bible. Let's have some fun together. Are you ready? Let's go. with games like this, there's never really a winner. There just seems to be oh! one big loser. That's how I feel with most games. It doesn't seem to matter how much I practice, I can't ever seem to win. It's true with everything. Badminton, lawn bowling, frisbee golf. can be kind of discouraging. I need a little cheering up, which is where friendship comes in. Friendship is using your words and actions to show others you care. Sometimes it helps to have friends around to kind of be like cheerleaders. 
Come on, Haley, hit that birdie over the net all the way to Camp Birdie. You've got this, Haley. Concentrate. Concentrate. Encouragement goes a long way and in today's story you'll learn about two guys whose friendship was built on encouragement The Bible it's 66 books of history stories letters and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story the epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of 1 Kings, chapter 19. For many years, God's people were ruled by kings who refused to listen to God. So God sent prophets to speak his words. One was a man named Elijah. I serve the Lord. Elijah did amazing things through God's power, like calling for rain after three years of drought and uh, bringing a dead boy back to life. But being a prophet was a lonely, difficult life. After the evil queen Jezebel threatened his life, Elijah fled to Mount Horeb. God, I've been committed to you, but the people have turned their backs on me. I am the only prophet left. God already had an answer to Elijah's pleas. A friend. Go back the way you came. Anoint Elisha from Abel Meholah as the next prophet after you. So Elijah tightened his belt and set out along the road. When he finally reached the town, he noticed several young men plowing with a dozen pair of oxen. And in the very last field, he noticed one of the young men struggling to keep his oxen in line. Get up there, Ham. Move along, Burger. God, is that Elisha? He's just a small town kid. What does he have? Does he have what it takes to be a prophet? But God had chosen Elisha, so Elijah tramped through the muddy field to greet the young man. Elisha. Elisha blinked in surprise when he saw the prophet. Whoa, Burger. Elijah marched right up to Elisha and threw his very own cloak over the young man's shoulders. It was a sign that God had chosen Elisha to be Elijah's assistant. Me? You're choosing me? Elijah turned and walked away. Elisha dropped the reins and ran after. Wait, just let me say goodbye to my family. Then I'll come with you. Go right ahead. I'm not making you do anything. Yes, sir. Right then and there, Elisha broke apart his plow and used the wooden pieces to start a fire. He cooked a meal and called all his family and friends over to share it with him. I'm leaving to travel with Elijah. Goodbye, everyone. Then Elisha set out on the road beside Elijah. I don't really know how to be a prophet, or, or even a prophet's assistant. That's okay, you'll learn. So over the years, Elisha followed Elijah everywhere as a close companion and good friend, and he watched and listened intently as Elijah spoke God's words to powerful kings and, and did incredible things. One day, Elisha and Elijah left the town of Gilgal on the way to Bethel, and they both knew that God was about to do something very breathtaking. God was going to take Elijah up to heaven. Stay here, Elisha. The Lord has sent me to Bethel. Elisha wasn't about to leave his friend to go it alone. As sure as the Lord and you are alive, I won't leave you. At Bethel, the same thing happened. Stay here, Elisha. The Lord has sent me to Jericho. As sure as the Lord and you are alive, I won't leave you. It happened once again in Jericho. Stay here, Elisha. The Lord has sent me to the Jordan River. As sure as the Lord and you are alive, I won't leave you. You do realize you're repeating yourself. Together, Elisha and Elijah reached the banks of the Jordan River. The waters flowed dark and deep. Elijah removed his coat and rolled it up. And then he struck the river. Immediately, the waters parted to the right and left. Elisha and Elijah walked across the river on dry ground. They reached the opposite bank. Tell me, what can I do for you before I'm taken away? Elisha didn't want to lose his friend and mentor, Elijah, 
but he'd learned many things in the last few years. Please, give me a double share of the spirit God has given you. Only the Lord can do that. But if you see me when I'm taken away, that means you will receive what you've asked for. Elisha nodded, and the two men walked on in silence. Suddenly, a wild wind whipped up, and a chariot and horses appeared, blazing with fire. Elijah. The flaming chariot flew down right between the two men. It caught up Elijah and carried him up to heaven, driven by a strong wind. Elijah, you are like a father to me. Elisha stared into the sky until the last breath of wind and the final hint of flame were gone. Then in great sorrow, he tore his own clothes. My best friend is gone. Glancing down at the ground, he saw Elijah's coat. Carefully, he picked it up. I wonder. Elisha hurried back to the bank of the Jordan River. Again, the water flowed hard and fast. On the opposite bank, a group of prophets from Jericho watched. Look, there's Elisha, but where's Elijah? Across the river, Elisha twisted up Elijah's coat. He called out in a loud voice. Where is the power of the Lord? Where is the power of the God of Elijah? Then Elisha struck the water just as Elijah had done. And just like what happened before, the waters parted to the right and left. The prophets from Jericho stared in amazement as Elisha crossed the river on dry land. The spirit God gave to Elijah has been given to Elisha. It was true. Elisha had been faithful to follow and learn from Elijah for many years, and now God's spirit was with Elisha just as it had been with his friend. One way to be a good friend is to just be there when they need you. Look at today's story. Elisha was there for Elijah right to the very end. And even after he died, Elijah's spirit was with Elijah. Now, I don't know exactly how Elijah's spirit was with Elijah, but it sounds pretty cool. Jesus said God would send a friend to always be there for us. The Holy Spirit is the ultimate friend. He gives you wisdom when you're confused, strength when you're feeling weak, and encouragement when you need it the most. That's the kind of friend we should be. You can cheer your friend on when they play sports or, or even if they have an audition or a hard test. You can give someone a shoulder to cry on when they've had a rough day or when something sad happens. Sometimes it's best not to say anything and to just be there for your friend. Just think of how you'd like someone to encourage you if you felt that way. So here's the one thing to remember today. Friends encourage one another. Encouragement may not make problems go away or make people any better at games but it can remind them that they're loved and that they're not alone. And sometimes that's enough. So, you are gonna be so good at this. Jesus, you have been so faithful Jesus, you have been so true I will be forever thankful Cause I never had a friend like you Help me to be who you've been to me To everyone I see Let us love one another with our love Like no one yet That's the way you love us, God You with me in the darkest valley You with me on the mountain top I'm thankful that you never leave me And that your love will never stop Help me to be who you've been to me To everyone I see Let us love one another with our love Like no other yet That's the way you love us, God Let's go.
God I wanna thank you for being a friend who's always by my side Jesus loves you so much that he was willing to die for you. Jesus was perfect. He never did anything wrong. You and I aren't so perfect, are we? We've all done bad things, even when we try really hard not to. No matter how hard we try, none of us can be perfect enough to get to heaven. And that's why Jesus died on the cross. His death was a payment for our sin, for all the bad things we've done. The amazing part of the story is that Jesus came back to life three days after you died on the cross. That's how powerful Jesus is. He's stronger than death. The Bible says if you say you love Jesus and believe he died and came back to life that you will spend forever with him in heaven. This is a pretty special present that Jesus wants to give you, but like all presents, you have to take it. All you have to do is to ask Jesus to forgive you for the sins and all the bad things you've done. And if you'd like to do that, repeat this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, Thank you for dying on the cross as a payment for my sins. I'm sorry for the bad things I've done. I want you to live in my heart and help me to do what is right. Please forgive me and help me to make good decisions. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, make sure that you let somebody know. Mom, dad, grandma or grandpa, I'm so happy for you. I look forward to seeing you next time, but until then, remember to make wise choices, treat others the way you want to be treated, and know that you can trust God no matter what. Mm -hmm.